Well, Mike Ako and Mahalo for joining us today's AEN hearing. It's Wednesday, January 31st, 2024, 1 p.m. And we're convened here in room 224 and video conferencing, which includes the audio and video of remote participants, which is being streamed live on YouTube. You'll find the links to viewing options for all of the Senate hearings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website at capital.hawaii.gov. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end the hearing due to major tech difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. Friday, February 2nd in room 224 during our regular AEN time slot. Any public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. So because of our 90 minute time limit for hearings, there will be a two minute time limit for all testifiers and we'll have a virtual countdown timer on the Zoom screen. So please be aware of the timer. Okay, so starting off with the first measure is SB 2419 relating to Ag Biosecurity appropriates funds for the biosecurity program of the Department of Ag to develop and implement projects for clean plant material, ag treatments, diagnostics, and pest management. First up is Department of Ag, Dexter Kashida. And the chair. Oh, okay. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Hello. Member Rhodes. My name is Sharon Hurd, Department of Agriculture Chair, and with me is Deputy Dexter Kishida. Chair, may I introduce the people in the room who are Please. from the department? We have Acting Plant Quarantine Manager, Jonathan Ho, and Acting Plant Pest Control Manager, Darcy Oishi, and they will be available to answer questions or comment. Thank you. Thank you. I th appreciate the opportunity to testify on this very important measure. We do stand on our written testimony, but want to repeat again what you just read, that this, this bill is to develop and implement projects for clean plant material, production and post-harvest treatments, diagnostics and pest management. All of these support production, which we have been uh, advocating for increased production on ag lands. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Next is Chelsea Arnott from the uh, DLNR. Aloha Chair Gabbard Aloha. and Senator Rhodes. Uh, Chelsea Arnott on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources and Program Support for our Hawaiian Invasive Species Council. Uh, the department supports this measure and appreciates the recognition from the legislator and this committee on the need for increased investment in invasive species prevention and management with the series of appropriation bills that are being heard here today. And I wanna make sure to highlight the differences in these measures and, and what they're gonna be supporting because they really support and address different arms or arms of our biosecurity system and our invasive species network. This measure specifically provides funding to Department of Agriculture, who is the only state agency with regulatory authority with regard to invasive species to conduct inspection inspections enter private property for eradication and control and implement the biosecurity program that was created through act 236 of the session of the hawaii law uh hawaii 2008 session laws this measure is an investment in beefing up biosecurity measures at the ports and critical control points to prevent the introduction and spread of invasive species through the authorities that only the Department of Agriculture can carry out. So mahalo for the opportunity to testify and I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Chelsea. Lauren Watanabe with the Maui County Farm Bureau is in support. David Arakawa from Land Use Research Foundation is in support. Nancy Redfeather with Kaohana o Napua has comments. Danny Chup Choi is in support. Alan Gottlieb with the Ponoholo Ranch in support. Nicole Galase with the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. Thank you, Chair. My name is Nicole Galase. I'm the Managing Director for the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. We stand on our written testimony in support because invasive species, it's not only bad for the environment, it's also bad for ag businesses. So this is worth investing resources into. Mahalo. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, J Jacob uh, Weedneck with the Hawaii Young Republicans in support. Wayne Tanaka with Sierra Club in support. Let's see. Larry Jeffs for Larry Jeffs Farms in support. 
Jeanette Burdick with the Food Plus Policy and Support, Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Senator Rhodes, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. I'd also like to take the time to introduce my staff. Hi, I'm Brian Miyamoto with the Hawaii <laughs> Farm Bureau. <laughs> You have a written testimony and support. Thank you, Chair, um, for making invasive species over the years, especially this year, a priority. Uh, it is bad out there. It's devastating, not just to agriculture, as you heard, but to environment, to Hawaii, to the landscape of Hawaii with all these pests. Um, so we really appreciate you taking up this measure along with other measures. We need to properly resource uh, the Department of Agriculture. I think you heard me on Monday saying that in 2002, the LRB report stated we need $50 million a year. That was in 2002, it's 2024. So um, that number has gone up. And if we don't put the proper resources, we're gonna keep fighting this. Although we're addressing and trying to control and eradicate the pests that we have here, if we don't protect our borders, we'll continue to get more and more and more pests and that price tag is gonna go higher and higher, but we're not gonna be able to properly fund it. So we need to properly fund the department now. Uh, if, if we really wanna achieve these uh, agricultural goals, again, doubling food production, farm to school, farm to food bank, dub bucks program, all of the goals that we have for agriculture. We can't do it if we don't have agriculture because of these pests. So thank you for making our priority. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. All right, Brian, thank you. Nathan Dewey from the uh, Oahu Invasive Species Committee in support and all the following Eileen Ye, Christine Agas, Joseph Watt, Molly Mamrill, Mark Philipson, Councilmember Esther Kiaina, John Gordinas, Eric Tanoi, Randy Cabral, Melanie Kim, Gary Uyunton, and Kimiona Kane, all in support. No opposition. Any questions? Uh, let's see, I have a question for uh, Dexter, DOA. You've heard the passionate testimony from the Hawaii Farm Bureau. So for those of us who are all concerned about biosecurity, what assurances can you give them? Good, good question. Sorry, Dexter Kishida, Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Um, and really, this bill is a piece of the greater biosecurity program that we're re-implementing at the department and bringing back greater uh, focus on our ports as well as working on on the pest control side in, on the in, inland. Um, so know that the department is back in action. I know there's some things that just through various reasons, we weren't able to do some of the work that really needs to be done. And thanks to the legislature last year, you appropriated um, in our budget money for CRB response. So we were able to spin up greater response um, to, to our different communities affected and commit to doing this in the future. But big caveat is we do need to be properly resourced to do these things. I Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Next is uh, Senate Bill 2358 rel uh, relating to Hawaii Invasive Species Council appropriates funding to support the HISC to ensure its long-term viability and prevent future problems declares that the general fund expenditure ceiling is exceeded. And first up is Department of Ag. Chair, member of the committee, Sharon Heard, Department of Agriculture, good afternoon. This is a very important bill and we do offer comments. Um, the Hawaii Invasive Species Council provides support. We work together. We support them, they support us. They're an integral part to the detection, mapping, and outreach for the invasive species issues in the state. The council provides excellent coordination of effort between multiple partner agencies, especially through funding. It provides through annual RFPs. However, to be consistent with the goals of the interagency biosecurity plan, the data they collect through HISC, functions, awards, and by Partners should be entered into a publicly available database, which the department has full access as it relates to survey 
and control actions so the department can coordinate regulatory response and control and research statewide. This data should be maintained in the state's agri standard GIS data platform, ESRI ArcGIS versus proprietary software not verified by ETS or the state GIS office. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is Chelsea Arnott from uh, DLNR. Aloha again, uh, Chelsea Arnott on behalf of Department of Land and Natural Resources and program support for our Hawaiian Invasive Species Council. The department supports this measure um, and sticking with that theme of highlighting where these different appropriations would go, um, Chair Hurd did a really great job of explaining the functions of the council and some of our funding. Um, so the council has provided funding to the interagency programs and projects since 2005. And this funding is used to complement existing programs with the other state departments. It does not duplicate them. And this it does this by filling gaps between agency mandates or existing agency programs and advancing our collective knowledge through the research and development of those tools. So just some examples of what our funds have supported, you know, the operational support for the Island Invasive Species Committees and the Oahu Hawaii Ant Lab. It supplied equipment and supplies for rapid response to coconut rhinoceros beetle and the detection of devil weed on Hawaii Island, and even multiple research projects at the University of Hawaii, including Dr. Thorne's work on two-line spittle bug. But of course, current levels of funding do not meet the current and growing need, and HISC is only able to provide partial support to the majority of the project's request. These funds have been integral in also leveraging funds for other sources, for whether it's from federal or county. And I just want to thank again the committee and the legislature for introducing this bill and happy to answer any uh, questions you may have. Thank Mahalo. you, Chelsea. Uh, Nancy Redfeather from Kaohana Onapua in support. Brian Miyamoto, Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair, Senator Rhodes. Uh, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have a written testimony in support. We stand by that testimony in support. I just wanted to come up here to, to emphasize the importance of his and again, their need for funding, this comprehensive approach that we have to combat invasive species. Thank you for allowing me to testify. Thank you, Brian. Wayne Tanaka from Sierra Club in support. Uh, Stephanie Easley, CGAPS. Aloha, Chair Gabbard, uh, Senator Rhodes, Christy Martin with CGAPS. Uh, Stephanie's gonna take half the testimony. I'm gonna take the other half today, okay. so mahalo. Uh, CGAPS is in strong support of uh, SB 2358. Uh, the Hawaii Invasive Species Council prioritizes funding for gap filling programs. Uh, as you're well aware, the agencies are funded to address um, issues in their mandate areas. So, um, you know, we, we fully support Department of Ag's work at the ports and trying to do inter island stuff and, and areas where the regulations are. There's a lot of gaps, though, between that and um, and the work that needs to go on in communities. And so uh, this gap filling funding is available to uh, to these groups. Um, and it's in, in a lot of ways, it's their lifeline. It is the only way that we can support the work that needs to go on in our communities. And so we appreciate consideration of bumping up that funding because uh, there's a lot of need. We always have to prioritize what we're going to do with that money. Uh, and it never comes down to a new truck. <laughs> but we need to get to communities somehow. So mahalo for your consideration. Perfect timing. You got one minute. <laughs> Stephanie? Oh, both of you. Okay, good. All right, great. Uh, next is Joseph Watt in support. Council member Esther Kiaina in support. Kimiona Kani in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Any questions? I do have one quick question, Chelsea. Uh, in terms of funding, will this be shared with all of the basis committees on the other counties? Yes, um, every year we support each of the island invasive species committees. The funding process is a competitive process, so they'll put in a request for proposals. And then we have an evaluation committee that's represented by staff from each of the uh, departments represented on the Hawaiian Invasive Species Council. Um, so 
almost every year, I can't think of a year where we haven't funded the Island Invasive Species Committees and the Hawaii Ant Lab, but then also a lot of the University of Hawaii research projects um, and other, there's other projects that we've been able to fund through that. Great, thank you. Okay, moving on to the next measures, SB 2359 relating to invasive species appropriates funding for the Hawaii Ant Lab to support little fire ant mitigation and eradication efforts. Okay, so first up is Department of Ag. Good afternoon again, Chair Gabbard and Senator Rhodes, Sharon Heard, Department of Agriculture. This is another one of those important bills that helps the Department of Agriculture do the work that we have to do with our partners. Hawaii Ant Lab is a very important member of this group of this co coalition of uh, invasive species fighters. I do want to read just the one part of the testimony though. The department would like all data collected by HAL relating to invasive ant surveys to allow us to better coordinate regulatory response and control and research efforts in the state standard GIS data platform, ESRI and ArcGIS. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Chelsea Arnott from BLNR. Aloha again, Chelsea Arnott with DLNR and Hawaii Invasive Species Council. Our, our department supports this measure and just want to highlight um, and thank the legislator for the appropriation for the same purpose um, that was awarded last session for the Hawaii Ant Lab. Um, and what I really, what we really need is for the Hawaii Ant Lab, which has been the statewide lead on little fire ant research, treatment, management, and extension, to have year-to-year -year dedicated funding to support their core operations. And this measure would do that and ensure that this critical program and their amazing staff are available at 100% FTE all the time for the entire state. Um, and, and this for the long run, which is what we are really in for with the current state of little fire ant. Um, on the islands. And that's not to say it's a lost cause because most of us do not have little fire ant in our beds or at our beaches or our farms. And that is how we wanna keep it and eventually decrease the number of infestations. But we really need that long-term dedicated funding to support the entirety of the Hawaii Ant Lab. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Nancy Redfeather with Kauhana Bonapua in support. Tim Lyons with the Hawaii Pest Control Association. In support, Wayne Tanaka, Sierra Club support. Hmm. Ryan Miyamoto with the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Thank you, Chair Gabbard. Senator Rhodes, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have a written testimony in support. I don't think I need to repeat uh, how devastating Little Fire Ant is and how important it is that we properly fund uh, um, the Hawaii Ant Lab. I uh, just wanted to point out that uh, although this measure seems to address just little fire ants, I understand there is also the red imported fire ant, which is even worse. So again, we need to properly resource. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, some of the funding can be used to address that. I know little fire ant is the focus right now. But again, just a reminder, we keep getting more and more pests in. So we do need to properly resource um, these organizations so that we can focus more on production in ag versus combating invasive species in ag. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Uh, Kathleen Pahinui in support, CGAPS. Aloha, you get me again. Christy Martin, Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species, CGAPS. Uh, we're in strong support of this. Um, oh, well, first of all, CGAPS has been working on the fire ant with a multi agency response for Oahu, particularly since 2014. And I have to say, I do appreciate uh, Chair Hurd's call out for um, better data, shared data databases, because when we first started uh, and even continuing, um, it's not been a great platform. We've, <laughs> we've gone from um, the department's old answer was we write everything on a paper calendar so we can figure out when we need to revisit. So we moved to a platform that was available, um, Podio online, it's just a, a, a group working space. And then moving forward, um, right now we're using uh, Google spreadsheet to, to manage some of this data. It is available to all of the participants on this working group, inc including Department of Ag. Um, it'd be great if we had better, but right now we have free. 
and available and usable. Um, you know, red and port of fire ants is a good concern. I, I definitely echo Mr. Miyamoto's comments. The White Ant Lab does that work. And in collaboration, um, we see gaps, the, the response team. We, when we do our Stop the Ant Month, our, our messaging is please collect ants and submit them. We've stopped saying, please submit your small red ants because we know that the public is gonna be the one to find the ants. The Hawaii Ant Lab is gonna be the lead though in determining what the control uh, uh, tools are gonna to be, the measures we're gonna to take to be able to eradicate and having that standing capacity is what we were missing in, when Little Fire Ants showed up. And so anything we can do to keep this capacity around and make sure that they're able to continue to provide the research, the tools, uh, the development and, and the procedures uh, as well as the extension work um, would be greatly appreciated. Mahalo. All right, thank you, Chris. Uh, Nathan Dubé from OISC is here in support. And also Joseph Watt, Luna Greenaway, Council Member Esther Kiaina, Jay Ashman, Kimi Onakane also in support. Any questions? Okay, moving on to SB 2411 related to two lines spittle bug appropriates funds for the Department of Ag to mitigate and control the spread of the two-line spittle bug and to fund recovery efforts for areas affected by it. And we'll start off the Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Senator Rhodes. My name is Sharon Hurd, Department of Agriculture, testifying on the two-line spittle bug that is Still, uh, I'll let uh, the deputy give you the latest and the greatest update he just got, but it is still a problem for the prime grasses that the cattle use at the Kikuya, and we need to get a, a handle on this so the ranchers can have a perpetual renewable source of feed. I uh, also want to mention that in addition, the impacts of two-line spitterbug infestations are generating fire fuel through dead grass. Large amounts of brown material and by allowing weeds that are more fire prone and long term and fire fire resistant to occupy the range landscape, we need to control the two line spitter bug that's creating this fire fuel. Thank you. I'll turn it over to deputy for the latest and the greatest. Sure. Right. Well, two line spittle bug is generally or held on the Hoya Island South Kona area. Um, we, we would definitely need to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. And part of that is work on biocontrols for this pest. Um, already the team has been working with Florida to, to work on these kinds of biocontrol agents. Um, so there is some anticipated funding that is mentioned for that work as well. But definitely this is a, a definite need to help our ranchers be sustainable. Thank you very much. So to be clear, there's just still on the Kona side. That's, Correct. That's, that's where they are. Okay. Correct. All right, thank you. Uh, Chelsea Arnott from DLNR. Aloha again, Chelsea Arnott on behalf of Department of Land and Natural Resources. I feel like I should have sat closer for this hearing. Um, and the department supports this measure. And I just want to mention that the Hawaii Invasive Species Council has provided funding to the University of Hawaii to carry out research and development of management strategies, but there really hasn't been any dedicated funding to carry out actual management. And that's really needed in order to contain, right now it's on the west side of Hawaii Island, and we wanna make sure it stays and gets contained and doesn't spread beyond that point. So th this funding is really needed for that implementation of the research that's been happening. Mahalo for the opportunity. Nancy Redfeather in support, Micah Munakata from Ulupono. Thank you, Micah. Nicole Galassi, Cattlemen's Council. Thank you, Chair Gabbard, Senator Rhodes. You've seen us here year after year asking for support because two-line spittlebug is a huge threat to both the ranching community and the wider community. Um, there are a handful of ranchers just at the forefront of this, investing hundreds of thousands of dollars each year to combat this, to mitigate this. Um, two-line spittlebug, like Dexter said, it's currently just found in South Kona, but this also means that it's just, it's an invasive species that we can put 
effort into and have a huge impact on. It's not yet widespread and we want to be able to keep it that way. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alan Gottlieb from Honolulu Ranch and support. Larry Jeffs from Larry Jeffs Farm and support. Brian Miyamoto from Water Farm Bureau. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Senator Gabbard, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, we'll stand on a written testimony in support. Again, thank you for uh, hearing this measure. And I'd like to stand here and, and agree with uh, his and with uh, Ms. Arna about not just her testimony, but also her statement about sitting all the way in the back and maybe sitting closer, uh, more so for me. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Send your staff next time, please. <laughs> Next is Anna Wieskerick from ZTAR, UH, in support. Oh, we're here. Oh, on behalf. Aloha, Philly Shimabukuro Geyser, on behalf of Interim Dean Anna Wieskerick um, from College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources. We stand our written testimony in support. For several years, CTAR has collaborated with Department of Agriculture's Plant Industry uh, Division and the, and the Plant Pest Control Branch. Uh, there does exist a critical need, and we ask the committee for your support. Mahalo. Would you like to add anything? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so <laughs> she, she was very <laughs> profound. Exactly. I can okay. <laughs> but thank you, Chair. There might be some questions, so stick around, Donna. Yes, yes. Okay. And CGAPS is next. Aloha mai, Christy Martin, uh, coordinating group on alien pest species. We're also in support. Uh, work on two-line spittle bug is, is really important. We have that opportunity. It is still limited and it can get more widespread. Uh, a couple of notes on this. Uh, we're very happy to see that biocontrol is part of this because while we do need to be investing in, um, in the control on the ground, um, chances are we're going to need that biological control, and, and there's a great need for doing more of that work, uh, not just offshore in Florida, but also in state. We used to have a tremendous capacity to conduct biocontrol research uh, work here, and it would be great if we could even begin to start considering rebuilding that. Um, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Wayne Tanaka, Sierra Club and Support. Taylor Kellerman. Eileen Ye, Jackie Hoover, Randy Cabral, Jimmy Greenwell, Kristen Mack Almason, Jay Ashman, and Camille Nakani, all in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on SB 2411? Any questions? Okay, hearing none, let's move on to the next measure, SB 2559, relating to invasive pests, establishes and appropriates funds for an invasive species placard program requires the Department of Ag to inspect certain establishments that are at risk of spreading invasive pests, establishes correction and quarantine procedures. First up is Attorney General's office. Good afternoon, Deputy Attorney General Travis Moon, providing comments on Senate Bill 20, excuse me, 2559. Uh, we provided our comments in our written testimony, but I wanted to highlight some points in, in that testimony. Uh, we recommend including a warrant procedure in the bill, an example of which is provided in our written testimony. Uh, we also recommend replacing chairport, chairperson with board on page 10, lines 8 and 10 of the bill to conform with the DOA rules on contested case hearing procedure. We suggest removing the term and definition of invasive pest from the bill and replacing that term invasive pest with pest uh, where, wherever it occurs in the bill. We also uh, suggest defining the term establishment um, in the bill, an example of which is provided in uh, our written testimony. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Department of Ag. Good afternoon, Chair, Senator Rhodes, Sharon Hurd, Department of Agriculture. We respectfully oppose this measure, recognizing that it is a threat, uh, invasive species, of course, and offer comments. The 
One of our comments has to do with the definition. The bill states, the department shall inspect a nursery farm or other agriculture related businesses. And agriculture related business is a pretty broad term. We feel it could even, and it could even extend into someone's home if they have an agriculture related business within their home. We just like a better definition of it. Um, the main, the main concern is that we do just do not have the resources right now. The Department of Health, when they implemented their placard program, they had quite a few inspectors in the field, you know, doing every door to restaurant to restaurant, property to property. Our staff is already doing that, but on a more targeted basis. In conclusion, this the final portion of this testimony. The department notes that it has no authority to suspend a business permit, nor does this bill indicate which specific business permit would be in jeopardy for non-compliance. Thank you for the opportunity to testify on this measure. Thank you, Chair. Chelsea Arnott from DLNR. Hello again, Chair Gabbard, Senator Rhodes, uh, Chelsea Arna with Department of Land and Natural Resources. Uh, the department supports this measure, and I swear I wasn't going to come up again, but I uh, just wanted to clarify for our support. We just recognize that this is a high risk pathway that needs some type of management and really appreciate the legislature putting forth various mechanisms this session of how we can uh, better manage that pathway. So mahalo for the opportunity. Thank you. Okay, see gaps. Good afternoon, Chair Gabber, Senator Rhodes. My name is Stephanie Easley with the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. Um, we submitted kind of extensive written testimony on this bill. We support any measure that the legislature takes to regulate the nursery pathway. It is one of the highest risk pathways for the movement of invasive pests. Um, we think that, especially after reading the AG's um, testimony, the warrant issue is a very real issue. Um, the way that it could be gotten around to regulate nurseries and allow inspections on an ongoing basis is to have a nursery licensing program. Um, there is an exception to the warrant requirement for closely regulated businesses. If nurseries had a licensing requirement that would permit inspections similar to the placard system for the Department of Health restaurants that would be that would authorize them to come in on a regular basis and do unannounced inspections, which is how you can ensure ongoing compliance in this area. P people know, you know, might give them the opportunity to clean up. Most of the actors in the nursery business use do use best management practices, so it wouldn't put an imposition on those that are already good actors. Um, one way to do this would be to take Section 7 of SB 3237, which is Senator Katie Kololewole's Ag Omnibus Bill, and combine it with the placard and inspection requirements from uh, 1150 uh, of, the high, <laughs> of the administrative rules. So there is a way to put together a program that could require licensing that would get, like the restaurant program does, get around the warrant requirements. Um, HGOA's testimony was that this would be something that could be handled by regulation. Um, HGOA, as they pointed out, is wildly under-resourced. Their noxious weed rules are from 1992. Their list of pests is from 2008. They don't have the capacity to make a whole new program based on administrative rules. So we hope you'll consider a statutory program to license questions in Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have... Nancy Redfeather, Wayne Tanaka, Nathan Duve, all the following are in support. Nahi Quartero, Christine Agas, Regina Peterson, Jezere Ioane, Tili Keohuhu, Johns uh, Kaava, Kavai, Kikona Laa, Paul Nahulu, Justin Baker, Zaili Unga, Alvin Alapa, Matthias Kalsiana, Councilmember Esther Kiana. And Kimiona Kane. Anyone else wishing to testify on 2559? Please come forward. Aloha, Chair Senator Rhodes. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. My apologies, Chair. This uh, this bill and the next bill we did submit testimony, but it was late. We acknowledge it was late. 
our apologies for getting the late testimony in. Um, so I'm not sure if you have it in front of you. We are providing comments. Um, we do recognize the importance of preventing destructive invasive species from entering the state and how difficult it is to manage those that become established in our islands. We appreciate the difficult work of the Department of Agriculture and its partners in preventing entry and their efforts to eradicate or control these detrimental animals, insects, weeds, diseases, and other pests. However, we do have some concerns uh, with this measure. Um, and I think you heard the Department of Agriculture and the Attorney General with some. Uh, one of those is actually the definition of ag-related business. We don't see it in the bill. We don't see it in Chapter 150. Um, is it going to include Home Depots and Lowe's and City Mill that sell uh, nursery items? Is it going to include other business? I heard somebody say, does it include restaurants? There's a lot of ag-related business. I think restaurants may be a stretch. Is it going to include farmers markets? Uh, you also heard the department talk about the resources. Uh, again, uh, model maybe after the Department of Health with their permitting pro uh, program, but that's required, and again, I think as part of being a restaurant. Are we going to ins uh, inspect the 7,328 farms on record. I believe there are more, but according to USDA, those are the farms on record. Is the inspection uh, based off of complaint? That's not clear. I believe that, I we believe that was the case, but the department has a different uh, interpretation. So again, there's some uncertainties in, in the bill um, and I'll run out of time. Again, we, we support the efforts to control invasive species, uh, but we do have concerns with this bill and uh, apologies, Chair, if you didn't receive our testimony, we will make sure you get it in. Great. But we'll get it to you. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Brian. Okay, Any questions? None. We'll move on to SB 2560. And that is relating to invasive species, provides that each lease that the Department of Ag enters into, reviews, or extends after the effective date of this act shall authorize the department to one, enter the lease premises at any time to identify, investigate, control, or eradicate invasive species, and two, terminate the lease if the lessee refuses the department entry or is found in violation of any applicable law, rule, or order relating to the control or eradication of invasive species. And Department of Ag, let's start with you. Chair. Senator Rhodes, Chair of Department of Agriculture. We stand on our written testimony, but want to repeat that the department supports the intent of this measure, but believes that it is already addressed through the general lease provisions that are already in place. Thank you for the opportunity to testify on the measure. Thank you. Uh, C gaps. Good afternoon, Chair Senator Stephanie is again with Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. We also support this measure. Um, in our written testimony, we suggested a, a change that allows, that would require the language to allow HDOA to survey for a pest. A lot of these pests can't be seen from the road or outside the property, and getting um, access to the property has been an issue in, even in the other provisions of the statutes that they have with warrants and access. So if you had um, the access to survey for the species that would be helpful to identifying where they're located. Um, we also suggest changing the term invasive species to invasive pests. Again, invasive species isn't defined anywhere and pest is the um, concept that is used throughout chapter 150A. Um, we suggest also including any restricted or prohibited species so that mongoose and other um, animals would be included. And we also suggest adding a provision that would allow HDOA to require a lessee to main con maintain control in a, of an invasive pest on the lease premises at the lessee's expense. Because again, HDOA is very under-resourced. This would be a provision that would be used in extreme cases where if a lessee was not um, maintaining their property, was allowing invasive species to be present and not taking control actions, they could order them to do it instead of having to use their own resources to do it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Nathan Du, Christine Agus, Nancy Redfeather, Joseph Watt, and Kimiona Kane all in support. Questions? Uh, I have a question for Department of Ag. How much ag land is under state lease right now? Brian has that. Yeah. And then, secondly, how many leases are up for renewal? Do you have that or? We have 
probably we'll have to get back, back to okay. you on those. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Senator, we'll include those Act 90 lands as well that are in transition. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, yes. Please, Brian. I'm just trying to get my steps in. <laughs> yes. Good workout. Never thought of it from that point of view. That's <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Again, apologies for the, the, the late submittal on our testimony. Uh, we provide comments. Uh, again, completely understand what we're trying to do. We're trying to uh, address our invasive species issue. But we do um, suggest some amendments because we want to provide due process and the opportunity for the lessee to work cooperatively with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, so uh, our our suggestions are on starting on page nine. Um, it reads, enter the lease premise at and amend to say a reasonable time and with reasonable notice to and then it does say identity, but I think it means identify, investigate, control, or eradicate invasive species, new language after reasonable attempts to work cooperatively with the lessee have failed. And then start on line 12, number two, uh, language says terminate the lease if the lessee refuses the department entry or is found in violation of any new language, reasonably applied applicable law. We do have that in a written testimony. We did submit it online, but it is late. So if you haven't received it, Chair, we'll make sure it gets to you and your committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Okay. Um, questions? Other questions? We're going to uh, go out of order and skip uh, on the agenda SB 2424 at this time. I'll explain in a little while and move on to SB 2361 relating to ag establishes two permanent full time equivalent grant specialist positions within the Department of Ag and appropriates monies to fund the positions. First up is Department of Ag. Afternoon again, Chair, Senator Rhodes, Chair and her Department of Agriculture. This is a very important bill to the uh, obtaining of resources for the Department of Agriculture. This bill provides for the general funding mechanism for two positions that are currently federally funded. They're funded with N funds and P funds. We have two positions that are currently funded by the N grant, which is the micro grants for food security program. That program is generally in the two to $3 million range. And of that grant, only 3% is the maximum we can use for a grant administration over a three year period. So that's like $90,000 for three to pay for three years for that position. Additionally, if you're P funded, which is, uh, oh, I got that wrong, but the specialty crop block grant program is the recurring grant that caps a maximum of 8% over a generally $500,000 award. 8%, we, we need some of it for indirect cost. And so we generally allot about 5%. That is about $50,000 and it is just, it's difficult to attract a person to take a job like that with the funding being so uh, soft and un, it's not a reliable source of funding, but the job that they do is just incredible. Right now we have staff working on, there's one position being filled. Uh, we have staff working on the micro grants for food security that they're awarding 562 agreements to constituents of the state of Hawaii, $5,000 amounts, and nine organizations. So that's a lot of work. And if we don't have somebody in these positions, I don't know if we can continue to monitor, to uh, administer the micro grants. We'll do our best. Um, the average salary, according to salary.com, for a grant writer in, in, the, in Hawaii ranges between seventy dollars and $88,000. We would like that position to be well within that range. Sorry, Thank you. your time's up. Thank you very much. When we start decision making, we'll arrange. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next is Warren Watanabe from Maui County Farm Bureau, in support. David Arakawa, Land Use Research Foundation, in support. All of those following are in support. Nancy Redfeather, Mike Munakata, Ulupono Initiative. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, uh, Senator Rhodes, and members of the committee. Mike Munakata here on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative. 
Uh, we stand on our testimony in strong support of this measure. Chair, I, I know we've been pushing this for a couple of years now. Last year, we appreciate the, the efforts of the legislature to pass a trust fund position in the budget. Um, however, that uh, position is trust funded. And as a result, that, that dollar amount that actually comes out, it's about a $30,000 a year position, which is going to make it extremely difficult to, to fill. So I think this year with measures such as these, uh, we're looking to create some capacity within the Department of Ag. We're actually looking for three positions. You heard the chair mention some of her N and P funded positions. We're also trying to change the means of financing of that trust funded position. Um, you know, from, from a skim of the federal grants that are out there just right now, if the state invests about $300,000 into these three grant writers, there's $14 million on the table for the department to go get. That is almost a 50 times return on investment from the state. That is pretty rare to find when we're looking to leverage a lot of the funds that are out there. We've done a lot of work at Ulupono on the private sector side. Over the last 10 years, we've invested about $1.4 million into grant writing services. That's brought in $140 million into the state. That's 100 times return on investment. Grant writing is extremely important. There's money that's out there. The time is now. A lot of federal dollars that are out there. We need to create the capacity to quite frankly, stop bothering you guys for so much money and we can actually go and get some money from the feds as well, especially when times are tough. So um, we do think that this is a, a sound policy uh, for the legislators to, to truly consider, again, three positions within the Department of Ag to really help them go get that funding. I think the chair has dedicated a lot of her time and efforts over the course of her time at DOA to really go get those monies as well. So it's great to have the commitment from the Department of Ag. And now we like to see it come to fruition because all this money does come to our producers at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Thank Chair. Thank you, Mike. Would a standing ovation would be appropriate from DOA? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, Alan Gottlieb, Eric Tenoy, Brian Miyamoto from the Farm Bureau. <gasps> Good afternoon, Chair. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. You have a written testimony in support. I think both the Department of Agriculture and Ulupona articulated how important and critical uh, these positions are for the agricultural sector. So I won't repeat that. But again, um, the, the ROI, um, the outcomes from the privately funded programs, pretty much that Ulupona is doing right now, uh, that'll be increased if we have it housed within the Department of Agriculture and have dedicated funding for these positions. So again, we appreciate you introducing the bill, Chair. It is this year one of Hawaii Farm Bureau's priority measures. We do have nine and this is one of our top priority measures. So it is extremely important. We do want to access those, access those dollars uh, from the federal government to support the growth of agriculture here in Hawaii. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you. Uh, Myung Oh from the Local Food Coalition. Good afternoon, Chair Gabbard, Aloha. Senator Rhodes, um, young -O here on behalf of the Local Food Coalition. Our uh, organization is comprised of farmers, ranchers, as well as um, livestock producers as, um, and other organizations. We're in strong support of this measure. Um, as everyone has uh, testified on, we echo all of everything that they said. Um, one thing that we would want to add is, you know, think of it as uh, the multiplier effect of the investment of these dedicated positions. Um, beyond that will be monies outside of Hawaii federal government drawing back to Hawaii's economy to help support the ag industry. So really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mio. <clears throat> Eileen Ye, Molly Mamaril, Mark Phillipson, Randy Cabral, Melanie Kim, all in support. Anyone else wishing to testify on this measure? Any questions? Uh, one question for uh, Department of Ag. So would 225,000 be sufficient to cover the salaries and fringe for the two positions in this bill? 80 times. Yes. Okay, Wait, you, given that you have 110 vacancies, how can we be sure that you're going to fill these, uh, these positions? Actually, we have 89 day hires that are currently serving to do the micro grants for food security. We have interns that are looking to come to work at the Department of Agriculture, they find the work valuable. So I can't guarantee that they will, but with that salary, I think you'll at least attract a pool of applicants. Okay, okay. thank you.
Brenton's next door, so yeah. we're going to be sharing. Uh, we need to go into any. Uh, no, I'm good. Right you're good. Okay. So the third member of our committee is sharing the room with the hearing next door. So he's going to be. <laughs> see how this works out. <laughs> <laughs> Since we need a quorum and we <laughs> he's needed for quorum, otherwise we're gonna be deferring decision making. So yeah. Here he is. All right. Okay, so we're going to just move right into decision making. Uh, we'll start off with SB 2419 uh, relating to Ag Biosecurity, uh, appropriating funds for the biosecurity program, the Department of Ag. And uh, the chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for, you know, I feel like we should have a guitar and start singing Kumbaya in terms of invasive species today. It's that kind of a hearing. So thank you for all that you guys do. Really appreciate it. So Chair's recommendation will be to pass as is. Any Good. concerns or questions? I'll uh, have uh, Senator Rhodes take the vote. Chair votes aye. On SB 2419, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Richards is excused. Uh, Senator Coyd is excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Watt. Aye. Thank you, members. Next is SB 2358 relating to Hawaii Invasive Species Council. Uh, chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Any questions or comments? Chair votes aye. Uh, noting the, uh, on SB 2358, uh, recommendations to pass as is. Noting the excused absences of Senators Richards and Coit. Are there any no's or reservations? Everyone else voting yes. Uh, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, Senator Rhodes. Next is SB 2359, related to invasive species, the Hawaii Ant Lab. Chair's recommendation is to pass as is. Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation SB 2359 is to pass as is. Chair votes yes. Senators Richards and DeCoy are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wa. Aye. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. SB 2411, two line spittlebug. Uh, the chair's recommendation will be to pass with tech amendments. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation on SB 2411 is to pass with techs. Uh, chair votes aye. Rich, uh, Senators Richards and DeCoyter are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wah. Aye. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Uh, SB 2559 relating to invasive pests. Uh, the chair's recommendation will be to pass with all of the AG's uh, suggested amendments and tech amendments. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation to SB 2559 is to pass with amendments. Uh, chair votes aye. Senators Richards and DeCoyt are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wah. Aye. Recommendations adopted. Thank you, members. And SB 2560 relating to invasive species. Uh, chair's recommendation will be to pass all three of CGAP's suggested amendments. Uh, and also there's some tech amendments. Uh, any discussion? Chair votes aye. On SB 2560, recommendation passed with amendments. Chair votes aye. Senator Richards and DeCoyte are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wa. Aye. And then we're going to skip over SB 2424. Move to the last measure. SB 2361. Uh, actually, SB 2424, we're going to defer indefinitely in favor of the next measure. So with uh, SB 2361 re relating to ag, uh, chair's recommendation will be to pass with an appropriation of $225,000. Any discussion? Is that an amendment? Yes. Okay. Our recommendation on SB 2361 is to pass with an amendment. Uh, chair votes chair aye. Votes aye. Senators Richards and DeCoyte are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wah. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very done. much. And that will adjourn this hearing. Aloha. Mahalo. Okay, aloha, my kako, and welcome to the Joint Agriculture and Environment Committee and Committee on Water Land.
decision making here in room 224. And uh, we'll get right into it. Okay, so uh, we'll start off with the uh, Senate Bill 2501. Relating to Hawaii Invasive Species Council requires HISC to prioritize the protection of exceptional trees. And so the chair's recommendation uh, will be to amend A17 to read, quote, protect exceptional trees as defined in section 58-3 from invasive species, semicolon, and, and close quotations. Okay, any discussion? Just a question, what is, does that mean that, um... What does that mean? Does that mean exceptional trees have a separate category that's higher than everything else? Or no, just make sure that they, they're included. They're included. Yeah, okay. That's okay. It. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, chairs, uh, chair votes aye. Senator Rhodes. Chair's recommendation on SB 2501 is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Senators uh, Richards and DeCoit are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Watt. Aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Okay. For the Committee on Water and Land, same recommendation to pass 20, SB 2501. Did you see with amendments? Yes. With amendments. Okay. Any discussions? Hearing none. Vice Chair for the vote, please. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2501 with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey is excused. Senator Favela is excused. Madam Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, the next measure is uh, SB 2053 relating to environmental protection, appropriates funds for the construction and operation of non-chemical sunscreen dispensers on all, all state beaches, allowing DLNR to contract or form a partnership with private parties to assist with the maintenance and management of sunscreen dispensers at all state beaches. Okay, so on this uh, measure, I'd like to amend this to uh, in line with the testimony from the Hawaii Reef and Ocean Coalition. Uh, add an amendment to amend page three, line seven to read, quote, beaches, comma, as well as to publicize that the mineral-based sunscreen in these dispensers is more protective of our coral reefs, uh, unquote. And also amend section four to insert $100,000 as appropriation in line with DLNR's testimony. Any discussion? The chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation SB 2053 is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Senators Richards and DeCoit are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Watt, no. No. Recommendations adopted. Okay. Thank you, members. The Committee on Water and Land, same recommendation is to pass SB 2053 with amendments. Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Of the three members present from Water and Land, are there any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Senate Bill 2159 relating to food sustainability, requires Department of Ag in, in coordination with Office of Planning and Sustainable Development to prepare and periodically update the state ag functional plan to include other ag economic updates including seafood sustainability that expands the state's priority on food by including wild seafood as a viable food source. Okay, and so uh, I've got a couple of amend amendments here on this measure on page two, line 11 and line 15 would be to replace the words the seafood sustainability with the words aquaculture. And then on page two, line 12, replace quote unquote wild seafood with quote, fresh and saltwater aquatic organisms, unquote. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation to SB 2159 is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Senators Richards and DeCoit are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Waugh. Aye. Recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Okay. Same recommendation to the Committee on Water and Land. A recommendation is to pass SB 2159 with amendments. Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2159 with amendments of the three members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. Moving on to SB 2155 relating to ag land use potential, requiring Department of Ag to contract a third party entity to compile a report evaluating the ag land use potential of each parcel of state owned lands greater than five acres 
excluding commercial, residential, and Department of Education lands. So on this one, uh, I'd like to amend this measure. On page three, line one, I'd like to delete uh, six, item six, which says nautical direction, and also remember the rest. And then on page four, line 14, insert an appropriation amount of $1 million, and it needs tech amendments as well. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Senator Rhodes. Chair, Chair's recommendation on SB 2155 is to pass with amendments. Chair Gabbard votes aye. Senators Richards and DeCoit are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wall. Aye. Your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Chair's recommendation on SB 2155 is to pass with amendments. Any discussions? Members on the Committee on Water and Land. Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2155 with amendments of the three members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations. Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Moving on to SB 2495 related to water metering, exempts from acreage assessments, land occupiers who have not applied for water service for the following year. And let's see, on this one yeah, we have understood. on page two, I'm going to delete the proposed added language. And then on page two, also add a new B section four, which reads, quote, shall conduct yearly notification to all irrigation users via paper mail and in-person visits on procedures to remove unused irrigation system water meters and to stop acreage assessments, unquote. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation on SB 2495 is to pass with amendments. Chair Gabbard votes aye. Rip Senators Richards and DeCoit are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Watt. Aye. Recommendations adopted. Thank you, members. Chair's uh, recommendation is to pass SB 2495 with amendments, the Committee on Water and Land. Any discussion? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2495 with amendments of the three members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Senate Bill 2329 relating to aquaculture appropriates funds, including for positions, equipment, and maintenance, and operating costs for mullet production for fish ponds and stock enhancement. Uh, Chair's recommendation on this measure is to pass as is. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation on SB 2329 is to pass as is. Chair Gabbard votes yes. Senators Richards and DeCoit are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wah. Aye. Recommendations adopted. Thank you, members. Okay, for the Committee on Water and Land, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2329 uh, as is. Uh, any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair would recognize Senator Favela as committee member is present. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2329 as is. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey is excused. Senator Favela. Aye. <laughs> Madam Chair, recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next is SB 2147 relating to reuse zones, requires non potable water users and developers of real property located within a certain distance of wastewater treatment plants to use R1 water. And on this one, I would like to amend in line with DLNR's testimony and uh, DOH's Department of Health's testimony, amend section two to read, quote, section 342D dash reuse zones, non-potable water, and section A, after January 1st, 2026, any non-potable water users or developers of real property adjacent to or within reach of existing suitable infrastructure connected to a wastewater recycling facility that treats wastewater to R1 standards shall utilize R1 water for non-potable water usage. And then in section B, for purposes of this section, R1 water means recycled water that has been oxidized, filtered, and disinfected to meet the corresponding standards set in section 11-62 of the Hawaii Administrative Rules. And the next, uh, we want to delete section four. And finally, we want to re renumber section five and amend it in accordance to DOH's suggested language. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. <coughs> 
Chair's recommendation on SB 2147 is to pass with amendments. Chair Gabbard votes aye. Senators Richards and DeCoy are excused. I'll vote yes. Senator Wall. Aye. Recommendations adopted. Okay. For the Committee on Water and Land, Chair's recommendation to pass SB 2147 uh, with amendments. Members, any discussions? Hearing none, uh, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2147 with amendments, noting the presence of Senator Favela and four members on the committee. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. We'll be moving on to SB 2149 relating to permits, requires DLNR to approve or deny an application related to aquaculture within 90 days from the date it was submitted. Establishes two full time equivalent positions within the Division of Aquatic Resources to support the permit review process. Okay, on this one, uh, 2149, uh, the recommendation is to pass with an appropriation amount of $225,000 for the two positions as suggested by DLNR. Any questions? Is it, so that's an amendment? Yes. Okay. Yeah, to amend. Uh, Chair votes aye. Chair's recommendation on SB 2149 is to pass with amendments. Chair Gabbard votes yes. Senators Richards and DeCoit are excused. Um, I have reservations about the timeline, so I'll be reservations. Senator Awa. Recommendations adopted. Thank you, members. For the Committee on Water and Land, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2149 with amendments. Members, <coughs> any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2149 with amendments of the four members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay. Thank you. And in the last two years, okay. Chair? Yes. Um, with regards to SB 2205 relating to commercial use permits, uh, Chair's recommendation um, on this measure is to defer indefinitely. Is that in agreement? Yes. Okay. We're in agreement. Yeah. Okay. For SB 2148 relating to aquarium fish permits, uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with an amendment to add uh, on page 3, line 16, add the word commercial, and page 3, remove lines from 18 mm -hmm. to 20, and defer to date. Uh, Defer the date to July 1st, 2050. Any discussions? Okay. Vice Chair. Yes. Uh, thank you for your recommendation. However, I'll be voting no in light of the testimony submitted by Ms. Gibson and different organizations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussions? I had a question, Carl. I had a question. Uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to make the recommendation. You want to ask your question now? Or? Oh, it was just, I was just going to, I'm not quite sure what that means. So yeah. in terms of the, it, the carve out, is that change the carve out somehow? The, the, the carve out on this measure is with regards to the umbugger uh, suit that happened and the recommendation from the courts was to include uh, the decision not only to the aquarium fish permitting, but to aquaculture as a whole. And so what this measure is to separate aquaculture has nothing to do with the fish aquarium fish permitting system. But there's still a, the, the DLNR can still make rules. Yes, okay. uh, right. absolutely. I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a no to then, thank you. Okay, well, the chair's recommendation will be to defer uh, SB 2148 after learning that uh, UH Hilo researcher Maria Hawes uh, retracted their support for the bill and confirmation that UHC Grants Aquaculture Program does not operate under Chapter 188-31 permits, uh, given that that statute is specific to aquarium collection and sale, then I recommend you for a Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. And your journey. Thank you for the Committee on Water and Land with regards to SB 2148 is to um, uh, make a redo the uh, recommendation 
uh, it's going to remain the same to pass with amendments. Uh, we do need to take a vote on this measure uh, as well. And so the Water Committee on Water and Land is going to take a vote on SB 2148 relating to the aquarium fish permits. Uh, Chair's recommendation was to add on page three, line 16, add the word commercial. On page three, remove the lines 18 to 20 and defect the date to July 1st, 2050. Any discussions? Uh, Vice Chair, um, for the vote with regards to SB 2148. Thank you, Madam Chair. Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2148 with amendments. Chair Noye. Aye. Vice Chair votes no. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Favela. No. Okay. Madam Chair, recommendation is not adopted. Okay, thank you. Thank you, members. <coughs> okay, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>